Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the Master Wing channel. Thank you for stopping by. I hope everyone's having a great day. I have a very interesting video for you guys. Um, this isn't really a video for views per se, but I just thought it was really interesting because it might be a new strategy that you could add to your game. I don't know. For me, it was a big gamble and I just wanted to show how it goes. Uh, maybe you guys have already figured this stuff out with OE, but I'm still trying to gauge uh, some of my go-to strategies. So this is what this video is for. You saw the thumbnail. We do the unthinkable. So let's uh, go ahead and roll the footage and see what you think. You can see my starting hand here, but we go first. And the most powerful bird, or one of the most powerful birds in the game, is in the tray. The Chihuahuan Raven. And look at what we... I mean, we're contemplating back and forth. This is a big deal here, people. But we go ahead and draw cards first. And we spin the nectar and we take the other two cards. What do you think about that? Um, if you have played Wingspan for any amount of time for the, you know, the base game and competitive play, like, that's a big deal. Uh, we really risked it there. Not even picking it up to deny my opponent. Um, but the, And we'll walk through the reasons behind that decision, but, I mean, to pick up the Nat Catcher and the Black Naughty and to spin my Nectar all in one turn, <laughs> I'm sure it kind of confused or messed up my opponent. Uh, maybe they're thinking, wow, now I can get the Chihuahuan Raven. But check out my hand here. Along with the Black Naughty, um, I have the worm for the gnat catcher. I wish I would have hit record a little bit sooner so you could have seen me pick my starting hand. But my opponent does go ahead and take the raven as expected. But along with the gnat catcher, I have a titmouse uh, for possibly winning this end of round goal. I have a red breasted merganser, a uh, cassin sparrow or a baird sparrow, one of those two. And at the very end there in my hand, I'm hoping I show you in a second, but we have the dreaded pink power cowbird. Um, and that is a huge reason why I didn't take the raven. Uh, we do have some egg goals, but I'm trying a new strategy here, people. And again, maybe you guys have already figured this out. But with our tournament, with the Wingspan Tournament Discord right now, there are house rules. So uh, I know those are under review, I think, at the time of this recording. But you, you can't play the Ravens, um, the Chihuahuan and the Common Raven. Um, and you can't play the Killdeer or the Franklin's Goal until round two. So there's eight turns where you're kind of stalling in Oceania, you know, trying to get resources or draw cards. And then you're expecting an explosive round two with your Raven. Because in the base game, I mean, with a Raven, you're set. But I had a Forest Bird with the Tip Mouse. I had a Nat Catcher. And I've got Card Draw. And I've got this Pink Power. Which leads me to believe that the Raven was not the best play. Or the, the best pickup. And in fact, I'm almost trying to bait my opponent here. And it's, it's like I have this cowbird in the back. And as soon as they're kind of getting their game plan, setting their foundation, I'm going to lay down the cowbird and try to reduce this raven. Uh, so that's the thinking behind this. Uh, like I said, this, this isn't mind-blowing to some people. But to me, this was, this was pretty much unheard of because this was an automatic pickup in the base game. So my opponent, uh, we'll, we'll get into more of these decisions and we'll revisit this Cowbird Raven stuff, but um, it's still a really good game. I obviously won't say the result, but win or lose, I, I thought there were some interesting takeaways that maybe you could uh, add to your game. Um, if Oceania is the new normal, uh, this, is, this might be what it's coming to. The Raven, we just didn't care. Uh, Red-breasted Merganser goes down, so again, we have that nice card draw. That's a swift start bird from the base game. And then a Nat Catcher is perfect. It has that bull nest, so when we do decide to take that uh, Cowbird play, it will be able to lay on the Nat Catcher. And I've got two worms and two seeds, and I'm debating 
whether to play the sparrow or the cowbird in the grassland. And I go with the cowbird here because I think my opponent is going to lay eggs. Oh, we pull back? Do we pull back? I jumped the gun. Um, I need to lay eggs at some point because I want to get two birds in, in the forest. And with that tit mouse, I have the available food resources. So I'm debating whether Baird Sparrow or the Cowbird. I still think I play Baird, um, Cowbird first because I think if I played Baird Sparrow, lay eggs, and then play the tit mouse, I have zero food, right? And then my opponent plays Raven in round two, and then I'm gaining food, then I play the bird, and then maybe it gets an activation. So I think it was just a little slow in my mind. It's still a good bait strategy. I, I mean, I could have held on to it longer, but I'm just wondering, I guess we'd have to ask my opponent, like, were you preparing to use that Raven, like, all in round one, or... Do they have a pivot move with the Rufus Al and the, uh, and their, uh, what do they have in the wetlands? They have a wetland bird. So that, so they do have food access. Maybe this wasn't as much of a, um, a counter as I thought, but if you think of the Raven's power, you know, you're laying two eggs, you take away one of those eggs because the Raven's going to activate and get whatever food he wants. And then they're giving me an egg. So it's a neutral play for two food. And so I'm 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 tempted to call this brown headed cowbird a raven killer. Is this the raven killer? Let me know in the comments. Am I overreacting? Because that's a neutral play. And you know, if I, you know, heaven forbid get two uh, two pink powers or two counters, I mean that raven really loses its loses its strength in my opinion so uh that's what we're going with and it'll be interesting to see i, I don't normally let ravens go if you can't tell already we did win that first end around we got the tip mouse down we got our pink power down and now i'm interested to see if uh matt 9890 is going to play the raven he's got a ton of cards in his hand and there's a cast and sparrow in the tray I'm 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 thinking with as many cards as he has that he's probably doesn't want to draw cards again. And I think I do want to get uh the sparrow and the naughty down. Even if this cowbird is activating, I don't think it's a it's a bird where I'm never gonna have to lay eggs again because my opponent doesn't have that grassland established. And there are various ways, of course, to lay eggs in Oceania. And I'm sure he's gonna dig, or maybe he's already found a way. Maybe he saw that cowbird and started drawing more cards, and, and now he's not even gonna rely on it. I mean, that Rufus Owl is probably one of the best predators in the game, um, besides like Benelli's. I mean, it's pretty much a guaranteed tuck because you can see a bird that is less than 75 centimeters in the tray. And uh, we go ahead and pick up cards here. I think I will pick up Cassins um, because the last two end of round goals are egg related. And I also have that bird feeder bonus card. I've got a couple birds with seeds in their food cost. So along with the cow bird, maybe we double sparrow here with Cassins and Bairds. Um, we do have two nectar, so we're good there. And we only have one egg. My opponent plays the Australian Owlet Nightjar, which I think gives him a worm when I gain food. Like, like if there's a food, um, excuse me, if there's a worm available in the bird feeder, he's going to gain a food. Um, I think it's Sparrow, Lay Eggs, gain food and then either another sparrow or black naughty and there goes that sparrow i think these uh sparrows i think i've said it in other videos but um they were a little underwhelming in the base game because you're already getting 
you know, three, four, five plus eggs in a in a grassland focused base game. But these three pointers uh, that just lay consistent eggs, I think they've become more powerful in Oceania uh, for sure. It is kind of interesting. I mean, the designers of the game, if you look at Baird's right next to Cassin's, um, they're like the exact same bird. The only difference is three centimeters, basically. They qualify for the same bonus cards. They have the same food cost. They have the same power. I think the Cassin's is 20 centimeters. The Baird's is 23. The same nest type, the same nest or egg spaces. Just kind of one of those copy birds that's the exact same. Um, the cowbird hasn't activated much, and it looks like my opponent is not going the raven route. So credit to them. Uh, maybe this cowbird really made them second guess, and honestly, maybe we should have held on to the cowbird a little longer. And then, you know, he wastes those resources on a raven, and then we play uh, the cowbird. I don't know, but either way, I think the cowbird was a great deterrent, and it just validates in my mind that I didn't have to grab that raven. Um, if I didn't have the cowbird, I think we're, we have a different conversation, but there we go, back-to-back -back sparrows, so we will have a decent four-point uh, grassland engine when or if we lay eggs. Let me fix my camera here, just a second. Okay. Um, and then we got a couple birds in our hand that I'm not interested in. I think the black knotty is is great. You've seen the Black Naughty on several of my videos. A nine-point bird with a tucking power. I mean, come on, people. That's not much to complain about. And we've got six birds down, so some really good tempo here. I think these this uh, gnat catcher did well, getting me that extra food. And either my opponent has a bunch of cards that he's waiting to play, or... He has a bunch of cards that he doesn't want to play. Um, I think that Rufus Al is great for point scoring, but it's not helping them get extra resources. So my tempo is, is definitely nice here. We don't have a lot of high point birds. We're just throwing down the Black Naughty here at the end. Also, uh, thank you guys for the support. I, I don't want to be too much of a broken record. I probably am. But um, as my opponent plays the Morning Dove, there's that egg that egg issue. Now they've figured it out. I mean, Morning Dove probably the rest of the game. But thank you guys for the support. Um, I think we eclipsed 300 subscribers. I can't believe it. I had like three, and two of those were family members. So I appreciate your support on the Master Wing channel. Um, we get to go first in the third round, and this tray is being very generous. We've got Scrub Fowl, Hooded Warbler, and Black Crowned Night Heron. So that's a pretty easy decision. I think those are some nice bird bombs that we can get down. Question is, do I want to spend an egg? Uh, we go ahead and keep the eggs. So that's fine with me. That red-breasted Mergancer is clutch, and the Brolga comes through. And that could be my fifth bird for my bird feeder bonus card. It's not, it's usually not anybody's favorite bonus card because you got to get five birds that eat seeds and you only get three points. But we could play the Brolga. I think the Night Heron's a play. Um, thinking we gain food right here. Man, with all those cards, I mean, you wonder if they have maybe Visionary Leader. You know, there's always the dreaded Benelli's or Imperial Eagle. Um, it can get away from you. You know, those extra cards, you can you can find ways to get rid of them in Oceania with the, with the egg grassland where you can discard cards for extra eggs. And here we are. We ditched the, what was it, the Green Heron? I think so, for an extra food. Just debating what I want to play next. It's probably a black crown night heron play. I am going to link a video uh, in the description called The Entity Arrives. 
I know you guys have, well, some of you have seen that, but it's one of my favorite videos. And the reason why is because the wingspan game just seems to give me straight gold. And it's one of the few videos where I add a soundtrack to it. Let me know if y'all like the soundtrack in the background. Uh, you have to pay for those, obviously, for copyright material. But if you like any of this, you may want to check it out. It's called The Entity Arrives, and I'll put it in the description. Um, so, we are not going to go Black Crown Knight Heron. We're going to go Brolga. That is an 8-point play with that bonus card like I talked about. Maybe we draw cards one more time for the rest of the game. And that Brolga can come in handy. Um, we're doing exceptionally well in the end of round goals. And my opponent plays a pink power. So they are going to take away an egg. Well, not take away, but you know, lay an egg when we lay an egg. They've got the superb liar bird down, so that's only one ground nest. So feeling, feeling pretty good about uh, winning this third end around, honestly. We've got bird bombs. We've got egg resources. This is just a textbook game for forest. Uh, start with your forest, start with your um, card draw, and then build out from there. Greater Roadrunner. Um, I do like that bird in the tray. Well, my opponent takes it. I didn't think uh, that was going to be... Um, I don't know. It didn't really match with my end around goals, so I probably can't even talk. I probably <laughs> wouldn't even grab that bird. And now the tray is really unappealing. Um, and we have the Black Crown Knight here, but other than that, please tell me I draw cards right here. I need to draw some cards. I really don't like to draw cards in round four unless there's something amazing. With only five turns in round four, especially with a, an almost scoreless wetland engine right here, I want to have these extra cards to burn at the at the end of the game. I don't want to spin that turn drawing. Okay, here we go. Finally drawing cards, and check it out. We get more uh, white bonus card help with a king rail that's definitely possible and the broga can be good but i think we skip this brown power because my opponent only has one space for a never mind we totally activate the broga and draw two more cards um the black naughty is successful and i think we go ahead and tuck this in hindsight i probably should have kept the fish i've got two or three birds that need a fish so um maybe a little mistake there but oh and then we pull spotted owl people the card access is crazy i think the brolga activation was worth it this is obviously a post-game commentary so i didn't remember everything that we're doing I thought I skipped a Brolga at, at some point, but that might have been a different game. I think since I'm laying eggs next anyway, they were going to lay an egg on the Superb Liar Bird. So, it, you know, it didn't hurt me that they got an extra egg with the Brolga. And honestly, if they laid an egg on the Liar Bird now, then that would have... Yeah, see, they already have an egg on the liar bird, so I'm thinking if we lay eggs, they can't um, they can't lay an egg anywhere because the cuckoo only does bowl nests or ground nests, and and their board doesn't have those, so that worked out nice. Just a tough situation when you don't have the appropriate nest types. We've all been there. Sometimes you're just looking for a ground nest and you can't find one to play that's worthwhile and it looks like we discarded a card i think we need to discard another but we may save that for 
when we get food. It looks like this hummingbird is probably going. And this will be six eggs coming our way. It'll be a five point engine. No, it will be a six point play because the cuckoo doesn't have anywhere to lay. And my end game, I know it's a little early. We haven't seen the tray yet, but I'm thinking based off of food, um, there's two rats in the bird feeder. Maybe we go spotted owl and night heron. Let's see, we've got six eggs, so we could technically play um, three more birds. But we also want to at least qualify for this end of round goal. Um, I'm really interested to see what, what cards my opponent is playing. Obviously, they did not go the Raven route, and I think that was probably a good call from them. I have totally been on that side where you think this Raven is going to help you get a bunch of nectar, and then your opponent plays counters and you can't do anything about it. Pileated Woodpecker, Little Pied Cormorant, and the Eurasian Hobby. I don't think we're interested in any of those. And wow, the Brown-Headed Cowbird activates. I, this might be the first activation. Um, I mean, I guess it just sat there as a deterrent for a grassland engine. We are going to go ahead and play the spotted owl. We did fast forward through a little bit of the turns here because we know what we're doing. Rodentologist, that's okay. Um, so that turned into a five point play overall. Could be worse. Um, and then of course with the black crown night heron, that makes that bird even better. And it looks like my opponent is gaining food of some sort to play some more birds. He did really well you just emptying their hands. Sometimes when you have those extra cards, you wonder if you spent your turns. Look at this. Wetland scientist for seven points. I forgot this king rail comes in clutch. Literally five wetland birds for wetland scientist. That's the end of the game. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, it'll be interesting to see these scores. And are you implementing this no raven strategy? I mean, keep your pink powers in your back pocket. I think we definitely have the lead on this one. Just because of our tempo, it was hard to catch up with that gnat catcher and the red-breasted mergancer. 57 bird points. Of course, we drew very well. 14 bonus points. The end of round goals, we won three out of four. And they got more tucked cards and the Nectar. 108.93. Decent score. 108 isn't a super high score for Oceania. But we did get, what, 12 birds on the ground. And um, really did well as far as, like I said, our tempo and end of round goals. My opponent had Mechanical Engineer and Large Bird Specialist. GG, everybody. Thank you for watching. Check out the videos in the description. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you next time on Master Wing Channel. Peace.